Now, I, I, I mentioned to you briefly about that Mike Masters book uh, before we started about this idea of pedomorphism, how uh, primates, the, the offspring of primates, oh, yeah. they look more like fully grown adults today where they have, they sit up straight and they have these like kind of like bulbous heads that sits up straight over their shoulders and they, they look like, um, they look like normal, fully evolved humans today. But when the primates get older into full adulthood, they, they change their, their jaw protrudes, their head slopes back and they sort of hunch over. Um, and he, he says that this is an evolutionary thing that it looks like if you extrapolate that into the future, um, the fully grown adults in the future will look like the children of today, mm -hmm. more like, uh, you know, a toddler of today would be look like a fully grown adult. Mm -hmm. Do you know what, do you know anything about that? Or is that? I hadn't heard of that. It's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I would say is that, again, coming back to this idea, you know, you said extrapolate, like that's assuming that evolution is happening in this like linear direction right, way. Right. And it's just like so hard to say, um, you know, it's like the thing where people say, oh, our pinky toe has been getting smaller over the past 100,000 years. Therefore, yeah. eventually we won't have one. And it's like, well, no, as long as natural selection isn't acting against that, you know, as long as if someday it becomes really sexy to only have four, to four toes, <laughs> then the population would change in that way. But otherwise, we're just going to stay kind of how we are. Like you need natural selection to drive a change like that. Mm. Um, I mean, things can change just randomly, but usually natural selection would be required. So if there was something that was selecting for, and, and maybe that's part of the hy hypothesis, I haven't read the book. Um, oh, there you go, there's an example. Yeah, so if if there's something about the current state of toddlers, you know, human toddlers that becomes more advantageous in the future, then totally we could evolve to look more like them in the future. Um, but otherwise, we'll probably just stay pretty much the same. Well, it, 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 it makes logical sense if you look at technology taking over for the need for us to do like physical things, right? Mm -hmm. We don't need big muscles. Like mm -hmm. we need like toddlers have bigger heads compared to their bodies they would right. we would use our our heads more we would have we would be skinnier we would be smaller more frail mm -hmm. because we would rely on technology to do this stuff and um you know obviously technology has been advancing since we were first able to create fire and that's changed the shape of our jaws mm -hmm. and and things like this the shape of our heads yeah um we don't need giant hands anymore yeah so um I think technology would probably have to have a big part of that as long as technology keeps evolving and keeps, uh, you know, and who knows what happens when we really, when we reach some sort of like technological singularity, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe we just get wiped out. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But um, it, it seems like that has a lot to do with technology, changing, yeah. changing our anthropomorphic look. I mean, you could certainly say that like in our current environment, maybe, you know, our heads will get bigger because it's advantageous to be smart. But right. then... If you look at, have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? Yes. Okay, so that's been a long time. That was a good movie. With one caveat, that is, in my opinion, the only accurate portrayal of evolution I've ever seen in a movie. So you know, you have a lot of movies that talk about evolution. Most of them get it wrong. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I love the X Men movies, but those, you know, it's uh, even the movie Evolution is like not an accurate portrayal of evolution. Yeah. But Idiocracy starts with the idea that essentially stupid people are having more children than smart people currently yeah, right. and therefore in the future more of those children are having more children and these like stupid genes are being passed on to the point where i forget how many years into the future everyone is really dumb and so an average person currently becomes a genius in the future and it's it's a very funny very silly movie um mm. and i would say the one the one part my caveat to it being accurate is that we don't we haven't actually ever identified like a genetic contribution to intelligence because it's such a complicated thing to measure. Um, right. But anyway, but if that were true, you know, then absolutely, you know, I mean, if you, maybe if you, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but if you think about the people who are having many, many children <laughs> and think about that potentially driving the selection of our species mm. into the future, you know, it, it's just hard to predict what's going to increase um you know, in frequency in the next generation. Yeah. Um, well, the, definitely, the, if you think about it, you know, the people, the smartest people um, in universities and in labs, they aren't 
raising tons of kids, right? Mm-hmm. They're more focused on their on their work and right. whatever they're doing. And yeah. It's a much more uh, focused thing where you're de- you're dedicating all of your skill and all of your time to to mastering something or to figure figuring out a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, th- that's no, true. You yeah. know that that is true. Is that intelligence or is that you know how you were raised and education and all these other things? Like that's a whole other debate. But yeah, it's just to say that like I don't necessarily see a strong selective pressure driving us as a population, a human, you know species to be smarter have bigger heads etc you know in the Mm. ways that we kind of think well maybe the big heads doesn't have to necessarily do with being smarter right yeah it might not but again like unless people with big heads are having more children or people with small heads are not having children then there's no reason for us to move towards big heads and it also seems like we may evolve to be uh you know, is it possible that we evolve to even being sexless in the future with AI and with genetic engineering and things like this, where we're not, we're not creating, we're not procreating the same way, we're like by having sex anymore. It's mm-hmm. not this primitive thing we do anymore. Right. Now it's just like we use science and technology to create the perfect kid. We don't need to do it that way. That's too yeah. primitive. Well, and that's so interesting. I mean, you know, that would be like a, a cultural evolution that that could totally change everything about our species because, mm-hmm. yeah, if you don't, then then the rules of evolution as we know it don't apply anymore because right. you're creating that, that human um, in a way that our species has never done in the past. Yeah, and that's like another, one of the other uh, points of Michael Master's book is he connects it to like the, all of the worldwide dis- depictions of these little gray aliens th- that people talk about and people allegedly see that are, uh, they seem to be gen- genderless, have no sexual organs, and they look like toddlers, mm-hmm. right? And they have these big eyes, like they were adapted to see, adapted to, uh, to see in the dark, mm-hmm. Um yeah, and he and and basically he has this elaborate theory that um which is like it's out there, but it it makes sense in that realm um that like if we were to evolve hundreds of thousands of years into the future, it's poss is it possible that we could end up looking like that, mm-hmm. right? And then um if there was some sort of like nuclear war or some sort of cataclysm that wiped out um a large swath of humanity that we could maybe, if we were that far advanced, maybe we could figure out time travel, go back and select from the genetic pool back in the past and to repopulate the species in the future. Mm -hmm. That's his, that's his whole hypothesis, which is wild. That's fun. It's fun. It's (laughs) super fun. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Thinking about evolution in the far future and like all the ways that technology is going to be able to influence Mm -hmm. these things is, is very fun. (laughs) 